it says that then he directed. The word directed is past tense. That's while it was smoke. That's giving a time reference. Yeah. So that's showing a linear time passing. So where did they get this moral responsibility from if this is the first time Allah spoke to them? So that means they are gods. They this have souls. Um, being uncreated is an attribute of a god. So you got three uncreated beings in one verse. Right, welcome back. Uh, we just heard about uh, Surah 4111. And um, now this again is Jacob. And we're going to um, get right in with Surah 2130, which relates somehow, and I can't wait to find out how, to the last uh, Surah that we looked at. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if I can, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. What we have proven so far, and um, the first part we proved that uh, Allah did not exist outside of time and space by himself. We existed that he was not the only eternal being. We, we proved that he was not the only uh, omniscient being because obviously the uh, smoke and the formless earth that Allah was they were sentient. To, yeah. They they understood what he was saying. Um we also um broke down how you know how Muslims say that there is nothing like Allah. We 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 smashed that because we proved that communication is only possible via uh connections between the communicator and the one being communicated to. One has to have an antenna inside of him that can connect to the frequency of the uh, the sender. So it's a two-way process. So there is nothing like Allah. That means us as humans, um, the beings in 4111, they would have no way of corresponding with Allah. So we proved that. So now, um, before I um, speak about 2130, I want to cover one more thing in 4111. I think I came um, off the screen, but um, give me a second. So now um, we're going to expose another false claim that Muslims make. They say that the Quran is uncreated. Well, we can see in this passage before you, Surah 4111, that this is a created story. And how do we know that it's created? Because it contains past tense references within the passage. When it says, then he directed himself. The very fact that it has the suffix, the ending ed at the end of the word directed, that means it's a past tense action that took place. So how could something uncreated contain <laughs> past tense references? I yeah. think if you got a sound to, to make a bomb noise, that's a good time to drop that bomb noise because that's a bomb right there. How can something uncreated have past tense references in it. It says that then he directed. The word directed is past tense. And then it says while it was smoke. That's giving a time reference. While you say you go, you understand like I was sitting here while something else was happening. Yeah. So that's showing a linear time passing. While you was cooking, I was watching TV. You get it? Yeah. But this is uncreated, right? But it's showing that it has time in it. It's showing that it has past tense in it. What, what you would expect from an eternal, uncreated book is from an all-knowing God is either everything is in the future tense because God already knows it's, it's going to happen or everything is in the past tense because God is currently revealing an eternal book that had foreknowledge but to an audience who is without foreknowledge, so he's reminding them, as he sometimes does, oh, prophet, do you remember when such and such? So he's in the present. He's in the ever-present. Our Lord, uh, Yahweh, is always in the present. He is outside of time. He's never in the past only or in the future only because he is eternal. He is the first and the last. He is, he, he's there like long after everybody, long before everybody. 
you know, so you would expect the book to all be in the future tense, all be in the past tense, or all be in the present tense. But um, right. obviously we find that's not the case. They might try to say, this wasn't um, before time and space. We're about to get them busted. We're we about to get them busted with their own Sahi international translators. We're going to show you that these beings were in another dimension outside of time and space. Because even when you look at um, the verse in front of you, it says, then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, calm, and in parentheses they have, into being. Calm into being. If you're telling something to calm into being, being means to come into the physical reality. Yeah. So that means these, these beings live outside of time and space. Yoga. Yeah. The other interesting thing is to say to something with a name, come into being. So you would expect right. Allah to be speaking to the emptiness and saying, earth, come into being. You don't direct yourself towards a pre-existent earth and then tell the earth to come into being Perfect. because... It's like me saying, hey, Jacob, stop being Jacob now. But I've already just called you Jacob. So clearly you were Jacob when I started my sentence, as well as at the end when you go, all right, then, Kay. I that was very smart of you, Kay. Yeah. Kay, that was very smart of you. And I, I want to reiterate it. What Kay just said is that you have Allah, how is he directing himself to something before he said to something to come into being? Because if it's not in the physical reality yet how is he directing himself that's a very good um thing you pointed out okay thank you that was very smooth i like that yeah so um you have that what k just pointed out and the fact that they had to come from somewhere so if nothing was created yet where were they coming from they was coming from out time outside of time and space just like Allah. So these beings existed outside of time and space, just like Allah. Um, not only that, they had the um the eternal speech of Allah down pat. They understood it very well. They understood, and and they also understood the meaning of disobedience even before there was a Quran. So where did they get this moral? responsibility from if this is the first time Allah spoke to them. So that means they are gods. Perfect. They this have is, souls. I just thought to myself, this is this also is this is also the first time that Allah has ever been spoken to. Um and they don't give him any veneration. They don't say, oh Allah, oh beneficent, oh merciful, oh you are most yes. glorious. They just go, all right then or basically um we have come willingly so it it appears just in a literary fashion that they are accustomed and acquainted with the speaker because they just answer right. him as a as an equal as a kind of you know an associate Excellent. so yeah that's a good that's another good one you just pointed out okay that's Thank that's you. that's awesome i like that so now we have the fact that they didn't venerate allah and that makes so much sense k like Allah is supposed to be the God of the universe. They didn't show no veneration whatsoever. Mm. So that means they are on the same level. Perfect. They existed outside of time and space and everything. So where did they get this understanding? Are they a God? Is there another God that taught them? Or do they already have it inside of them? Mm. These are the questions these Muslims have to answer. They talk about the Trinity, but here in the Quran, you have the very Basically the same thing. It's not saying it's, it's three and one, but you still have um, being uncreated is an attribute of a God. So you got three uncreated beings in one verse. That's oh, like okay. that's it. Communication between three gods, like like the Trinity. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So there, so there you have it. So we have proven that this cannot be uncreated. Let me give them an example, okay? Mm -hmm. Um to say the Quran is uncreated, it's like saying water has been forever frozen. If you're talking about a story of water being forever frozen, nowhere in that narrative can you say anything about the word freezing. Freezing is a present thing that's ongoing, which is shaping process. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't say freeze because that's a past tense. 
So in a narrative of something uncreated, it has to always exist as is, a solid. Water yeah. has never been frozen. That's it. The Quran is not like that. It has a linear timeline of events. So that proves it's not uncreated. Let me give you one more example before we go to the 2130, because I got to show this contradiction. Yeah. Now, to say something is uncreated, but yet it's telling a story, would be like me saying that me and Kay going to the movies to see an uncreated film that has a beginning, a middle, and an ending to the plot. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That don't make no sense whatsoever. And this information that we giving out today, it has never been said before, has it, Kay? This is the first time, so this I've, is also yeah, like- I've not heard it myself. What do you call information when it's, when it's said a person like, this is some premiere, well, like a world a premiere. Too, I think, right? yeah. Yeah, it's like some debut information, so.